Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video we're going to be talking about open source intelligence and uh, how to conduct it and I'm going to demonstrate some of my findings uh, as examples as well. Open source intelligence is the act of gathering information on publicly available um, targets, right? So that could be websites, it could be, you know, employees, anything like that, right? This is also called external perimeter mapping and it's done to gather initial information about a target so then there's, you can outline better attack vectors. So that's what uh, OSINT is. OSINT stands for Open Source Intelligence. But how is OSINT actually used? So OSINT or Open Source Intelligence is the demonstrable ease of accessing sensitive information that is publicly open to everybody. So this could be things like operating systems, software version numbers, uh, internet service providers and potentially geographical locations as well. You'd be amazed at how much publicly sensitive available information there is out to the public about any given target. So my credentials for talking about open source intelligence or OSINT or, you know, external perimeter mapping, whatever you like to call it. Um, my credentials for this. So I've done two big projects on OSINT, right, or external perimeter mapping. So one of them was for a certification, my EWPT certification. I had to accurately and systematically map out specific subdomains relating to the exam environment where I would have to enumerate uh, potential subdomains and also go through exploitation of all of these subdomains as well and then write a commercial growth report on them. So that was one of the projects I did for open source intelligence or OSIN and another one was I had to do for my internship I did a project which was called um, external perimeter mapping for an organizational supply chain which is where I developed um, a good methodology into attacking um, open source intelligence targets so then I can gather information on them uh, to expand attack vectors. So we're going to go through some of the tools for OSINT, right? So we're going to go in order of the Harvester, Google Docs, uh, Netcraft, Whois, WhatWeb and Wappalyzer, right? Um, all of these tools have their own different functionality and features. Some work for subdomains, some work for just general enumeration, things like that. These are just a few examples. Um, we also have ones that could also just be general tools. So for example, Netcat, that's a popular tool to use um, to connect for reverse shells or just connect to victims in general or like um, any person who needs connection to their computers, right? And you can actually leverage this to find out information based on the connectivity of connecting to a target, right? So it can give away an IP address, what they're running, any banners or what the server's running. So for example, Nginx or something like that. So that's a really good way as well to use Netcam. Um, I might cover that in another video, but it's as simple as typing in NC space and then uh, the website you would like to try to connect to. So this is the part of the video where we're actually going to talk about um, demonstrating findings for open source intelligence. Uh, the tools I've just mentioned, we're going to go over them and we're going to talk about them in depth and their capabilities and what information they can provide back to the attacker. Typically, open source intelligence is done for either high profile individuals. Um, so I interviewed at a cyber, uh, at a cyber, as a cyber analyst at a company recently. And uh, one of the services they provide was open source intelligence on high profile individuals. So you can imagine how much information could be on out there on employees. So that was a service that was offered. Right, so we're going to go over some of the tools used for open source intelligence or OSINT or external perimeter mapping, whatever you want to call it, they're all the same thing. Um, so we're going to go over some of the main tools that I use um, and they're available, they're publicly available and open source so anybody can access them. Um, but all of these tools are mainly for web applications because that's really important for open source intelligence. Um, it helps the attacker or like pen tester get a foothold on the actual um, web application, like a target itself. So that's what we're going to cover right now. So if I open up the tab, uh, we've got a few here. So the first one is going to be the Harvester. So this is a very good tool to use for finding subdomains, right? So I've used this before. Um, I've used this for like certifications, for studying, things like that, right? Finding all the subdomains possible. Um, and it does a really good job of it. And it does um, a better job than some of the other tools that potentially might not get them. So. Uh, yeah, so that's happened to me, um, not recently, but that's happened to me before when um, I couldn't find any other subdomains on using these other tools on this target I was looking at and um, I then used the Harvester and I found another one and the other one was very important and um, yeah, no, it was really good. So I do recommend this tool, you can download it. The, uh, so I had a bit of an issue with downloading it. So basically um, you have to use Docker 
to make it ready and set it up or you can try to use it with pip but i had some conflicting dependencies so i couldn't do it but it's as simple as basically going code and then you go on copy and then when you come over to here you open up the terminal and type in git clone because you're cloning the repository and then you paste it in and then you click enter and that should be it right but i've already done this and um i had a bit of an issue because of like i said conflicting dependencies but what it should look like when you run it is something like this right so you put in the harvester dash d for the domain and then uh, dash b is for where you want to search it for so you can search for google and then dash l is length of uh, 20 pages so um quite self-explanatory you get a banner and then it just kicks off the scan line problem tells you what the target was and how, where it's searching for it and then what it can find right so you'll get any ip addresses for any domains subdomains or whatnot any email addresses potentially found as well and also hosts right um, and this can be used for finding um like subdomains and also just information i've just said so ip addresses things like that what it should look like oh that's a different tool never mind uh, but it should look like something like this like similar right um you've also got a sublister which is also good as well um but yeah that, that is the harvester right i couldn't get it working but i will for the other ones so that's what the harvester is now we want to go over google docs right so google docs is um where you can search for specific terms using Google um, like keyword features, right? So if we go over to the database, you can see all of the different types of uh, Google Docs there are here. It's also co called um, Google Hacking as well. So for example, site colon gov, right? Dot star means we're looking for anything as a site that contains government, um, so gov, right? Dot uh, asterisk, basically asterisk means anything after, so it could be so basically what this is looking for, right, is it's looking for any government website regardless of what they end in, right? So it could end in .com, you know, it could be a country code, like uh, .ca, I think for Canada, something like that, right? In title of index of, and they're looking for CSV files. So so they're looking for data on government websites, essentially. Um, and then like if we look down, uh, you can see in URL. So if in the URL it says admin uh, and also potentially login, that is php or aspx then um, return all of that uh, all of those pages right we've also got the same for robux.txt which is very common for web application penetration testing um as you can see there's some for database passwords so if we was to look at these right so let's say we were to try to find um google subdomains right so you can go in url and you can go google.com right and then add an asterisk at the start and then we should potentially be able to find a lot so what we're looking for is we're looking for in, in, in the URL of the websites that ends in google.com and it doesn't matter what the subdomain is, right? So we're looking for all the subdomains. As you can see, we've got www. here, right? And we've also got, um, this is Google Guide, right? And then you've got developers.google.com, support, google.com, another support. Uh, and then you've got www.google.com, sorry. Um, and yeah, it kind of goes off on a bit. But then what you can do is then you can just start taking them out as well. So you can, um, I think it's like dash URL. I won't do it, but like you can then start removing these to find out all of them. Um, you got another login page here, got PHP, and you know, everything that we're looking for, ASP, things like that, right? So that's a really good way to find subdomains and any other information as well. I would also like to mention that there's um, another tool, but it's an extension, but I'll get to that in the end, hopefully, if I remember. But yeah, so those are Google Docs, right? Now, one I really do like using is Netcraft. So Netcraft is really good for finding any potential subdomains or any information like internet service providers, IP addresses, locations, things like that, right, for websites. So for example, here, like we can put www.google.com. We may actually not put www because we want to limit it just to the main website. Accept, whatever, and just click, hold on. So site contains, right, and then you click search. There's also other features if you would like to search for other ones. But as you can see, here's all the subdomains it returns. It probably won't be all of them, and some of them will be false positives because Google doesn't want to obviously give away all their subdomains, so they'll you know put security mechanisms in place. But as you can see, we've got www, mail, docs, accounts, drive, translate, calendar, and like all the other ones as well. It goes down a fair bit, and then you've also got more pages, and it tells you what they're running as well. So they're running Linux, uh, what company they belong to, which is Google LLC. Um, and yeah, like it's really good for finding subdomains like this, right? And there's also another version of this netcraft, which is right here. If I get off of that page, there we go. 
and then we can search it. So what's that site running? So let's have a look. Google. The reason why I'm allowed to put this as Google, right, is because one, I know that they probably do have false positives, and two, Google is part of a bug bounty program, so they actively allow this to happen. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be testing it, obviously. We're just basically trying to kick off a scan for Google right now. Should be working. There we go. I just had to put in the protocol. So as you can see, it's gathering all the information now in the background for Google.com on the www domain. So looks like it's potentially done. So as you can see, there's a bit of a background, nothing too special. Um, if you scroll down, you know, you can see where it belongs to, Google, it's based in the US, uh, the, IP, the external IP address of the servers as well. So, you know, if that's probably, you know, that's probably a false positive, but you know, it's there. Um, things like that IPv6 address as well, potential DNS admins, things like that, right? So. Basically, if you used to do a bug bounty and you could find all this information and it was in scope, then you know that could potentially be of value. Um, we've also got name servers as well, which are quite common. Things like that, right? Um, so yeah, just information that's quite generic, but can also be of value and it can also give you geographical location. So it's quite important to know, especially if you're doing web app pen testing. Um, but yeah, so like I've said, um, I just want to put in a disclaimer, don't do this to any targets you don't have permission to do it to or do it for. Um, so for example, don't start doing it to your, like people's banks or anything like that, right? Because that would be essentially, that, that would be illegal, right? And that's, you know, I don't condone that. Um, the only reason why I'm showing you on Google, right, is because they have false positives. They have mechanisms in place to stop data leakage, right? Obviously, they're like a massive company. And also because Google is part of a bug bounty program. I think it's either on HackerOne or BugCrowd, or it could be on both, to be fair. But they allow permissions to do web app penetration testing. So that's why I'm showing, sh showcasing this. But if you don't have explicit permission, or they're not part of a bug bounty program, do not try to attempt this, because obviously you can gather information that is reasonably sensitive and um, I mean you know you can then use that for exploitation if you know you're wise enough so yeah so anyway so those are two are netcraft now we want to go into who is right so who is comes um, already installed in Kali Linux so I can show you that now but so we just open it who is and then you can just do google.com there we go and then it'll give us information back. So it'll say visited, contact numbers, email addresses, things like that, right? So it's a very interesting tool and very sensitive with information you can gather. As you can see, the servers, URLs, creation times, things like that, right? It's quite important. Um, but yeah, no, now moving on to um, what web, right? So, so we want to do dash V for verbose and then we want to do google.com, right? Click enter. Let the scan run. If it runs, there we go. So now it starts giving out all the information. So you do dot slash for making it runnable and then you run the program of what web. Dash V stands for verbose and makes it so all of the information that you get uh, given comes out at the, at, at the time it basically um, finds it, right? So if you scroll up, as you can see, Looking for certain files and have been permanently removed um, or like moved to another location. IP address, where it was located, any potential redirects it can have, and any uh, cross site scripting protection it could have as well. Um, yeah, I won't go through all of this information, um, but make sure you obviously have permission. And as you can see, HTTP headers as well. And obviously, it's the same origin policy as well, so SOPs enabled. Um, and implemented and then you've also got cookies as well things like that um so yeah for us to move on uh we want to move on to i think this was what web yeah that's what web so if you want to download it go to this website and go code and then download it i'm gonna say i don't want to really show you this i just want to show you this up here right it's called wapalizer and it shows you what technologies are being used on the current website right and it's really good for finding enumeration of versions and version numbers. So as you can see, you've got jQuery running, which is a JavaScript library of 1.8.1. And we've also got HTTP um, running as well. Sorry, I just drew a blank there. But yeah, so HTTP running, and it can show you various things like that. So it's really important to have. Um, so these are a few 
open source intelligence tools that you can use to gain reconnaissance on a web application target um, for a penetration test. Make sure you have explicit permission to do so as well, potentially in writing or if it's part of a bug bounty program or something like that, right? Because you don't want to be doing this illegally. But uh, yeah, so that's basically what I wanted to show you. Go tinker around with tools a bit um, on certain domains, things like that, ones that you have access to and permission to. Um, and yeah, like that's basically what I want to show you. And it's really good tools. I've used it before in the past for certifications and whatnot. Uh, so I do highly recommend it. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please subscribe and give it a like. Maybe turn notifications on as well so you get um, up-to-date videos for when I upload. I do a lot of videos like this about hacking and penetration testing. Uh, I'm going for some certifications. I'm going to go for EWPTX version 2, ECPPT version 2 and also OSCP this year. So if you want to keep up on that, hit the notification bell, like and subscribe. If you found this video interesting, maybe leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next. And I'll see you guys in the next one.